Hare Krishna. Well, I'm back in Budapest. Came back uh, yesterday evening, last night, and uh, did late puja because I didn't take Radha Damodar with me from uh, from my trip, as I mentioned earlier, in Belgium. It was, uh, I think, very successful uh, as from the uh, PR communications point of view, from the interfaith connections, as well as uh, as well as uh, reminding me of the importance of uh, contact with the uh, EU uh, leadership and uh, government. Uh, it really has a lot to offer. Uh, very important, both for our interaction here. It's somewhat of a different uh, different experience than people on other continents. There's no other sort of continental uh, government. It's a soft touch government. Uh, and uh, But it's a continental government that uh, has legal authority over uh, countries on different affairs. And uh, Anyway, I, uh, at the last minute, uh, Mahaprabhu, who is our European communications, who is trying to come, uh, was not able to uh, reschedule his ticket. So I arranged uh, for Naveen Krishna Prabhu to come from uh, the UK. I thought it was a good idea that uh, if I'm representing the uh, Hindus, that uh, there was actually uh, someone who would let people see uh, was from uh, uh, of Indian origin and from India, uh, although as it turned out uh, a, a very nice gentleman from uh, uh, the Sikh community in Birmingham uh, was also there. I was very impressed. He was told uh, the uh, commission and at our conference that they were feeding 25,000 people a uh, week from their uh, gurudwar in uh, Birmingham, impressive, 25,000 people a week. And uh, and here we stayed at a hotel that was really very close to uh, uh, the EU Commission's building. Uh, the government of uh, EU is a little complex and it has three parts. One is the Commission, uh, one is the Council, and the other one is the Parliament. And each one has a president, and the presidents of all of these three was there. The uh, president of the commission was the person who uh, actually organized and has been organizing uh, this meeting between religious leaders, political leaders for the last five years, uh, President Barrasco, and of the uh, parliament uh, was uh, a uh, President Buzak uh, from Poland, I believe, or Poland or Czech origin. And uh, then the president of the council uh, was uh, Mr. Van Rompuy, Rompuy and uh, he's of Belgian origin. So they were all there. Anyway, uh, my, I was very curious uh, not only about how the uh, politicians would react to us. After all, they invited us, so I would expect that they would be very favor or they would be favorably inclined, but as to how the other uh, religious leaders, particularly Orthodox leaders, the head of the Greek Orthodox Church was there, the Cypriot Orthodox Church. There was a very high level uh, meeting. And uh, of course, from representative of the Anglican uh, Church uh, was uh, also there, and, uh, and many others, uh, different uh, Muslim members of the Muslim community, uh, different uh, Jewish. Uh, communities from different parts of uh, Europe, and uh, everyone was very, very open, very favorable, uh, very nice, uh, nicely spoken, and uh, so we had good interaction, although there was a lot of movement going on. We were really moving a lot from one place to another. As I mentioned, first we started uh, at a reception, from the reception, and there was a photo shoot where we had uh, all the 25 uh, religious leaders had a uh, photograph taken with the uh, heads, uh, three heads of uh, uh, different parts of uh, the EU government, and uh, 
Then from there we went into a large hall where there was a big oval table, where I guess enough for about 50 people. And there were about 25 uh, religious leaders sat more or less on one side, and then different government uh, members on the other. Uh, interestingly enough, to my right uh, sat the uh, head of the Catholic Church here in Hungary, uh, who I not yet uh, met, although I've been to his Estergom uh, church, uh, Elder Peter, and uh, we had opportunity to exchange. And of course the discussion was about uh, how to combat poverty and social exclusion. And uh, you had to raise your hand in advance to speak. That was really very uh, well organized and uh, a lot of protocol uh, in regards to everything. So I, I had the opportunity to uh, speak at the commission and I spoke about uh, the fact that uh, even if we want to eradicate poverty and the uh, figures are quite staggering, 80 million people, which is a lot, uh, 80 million people in Europe who are living uh, at or below the poverty line. And uh, my point was that uh, it's a matter of supply and demand. If the demand is going to be that we want everyone to live at the same lifestyle as uh, the average German or Frenchman, we don't have the supply. Europe cannot supply that. Not if we're going to be trying to bring people to a standard of supply uh, that is based on our modern competitive uh, consumer society. Uh, but if we simplify uh, the demand and if we just uh, bring it down to the necessities of life, that people directly work for the food that they eat, uh, then that could certainly, Europe can certainly provide and remove these sources of poverty. People need not be hungry, need not be without shelter, need not be without work and they can have great integrity in their work because their work will directly be connected to the food that they eat. So they can see the results of their work. And so my uh, recommendation was that the EU support and fund uh, religious-centered, God-centered spiritual communities of, uh, which are self-sufficient uh, and based on uh, principles of sustainability. And I gave Krishna Valley as the example, which was the Hindu's uh, model of uh, sustainable, uh, simple lifestyle, and also gave some of the statistics, how our uh, ecological footprint is below the global average, uh, is below the way, way, way below the European average, uh, and, uh, and it's sustainable, because what's sustainable is 1.8 hectares per person, and in uh, New Bajadam, uh, we have 1.5. So the globe can sustain at the present uh, the number of people that are living in it uh, at that standard, 1.8 hectares uh, per person. And you can live very, very comfortably uh, like that. Uh, and uh, there's no clapping, interestingly enough, uh, anywhere, whether it's during, and it didn't matter who spoke, and we had different times of speaking, whether it was uh, here at the conference, which lasted well over two hours, or afterwards we went downstairs from the 13th floor to the uh, third floor, uh, I believe, where there was a press conference. Uh, again, there was no clapping. That press conference followed. It was mostly for uh, the politicians. There wasn't enough time to speak with the religious leaders. And then we went back up again for lunch. And during all of this movement, I had opportunity to speak with uh, President Buzak. I gave him brochure of Krishna Valley, and, what, and I would actually written up on the uh, solutions uh, to the problems that uh, the EU had posed, the government had posed. And uh, I had opportunity to exchange actually three times with President Barras. He uh, was very nice. He was very interested, uh, very proactive uh, in 